All right, another thing I wanna show you before we dive into processing here is just what a single uh, sub looks like in each channel and then what it looks like after they're stacked. We'll see this uh, a little bit as we go, but a lot of people just are curious about this up front. So keep in mind, this is just for this particular object, which is the Seagull Nebula, or sometimes called the Parrot Nebula, IC2177. But it's still illustrative, I think, of uh, what you can maybe expect uh, out of an object that emits in hydrogen alpha, O3, and S2. So. The first thing we're going to look at here is an H alpha single sub. So this is one five minute exposure with the ZWO ASI 1600 in H alpha. Now let's look at after it's been stacked. So this is I think like 30 uh, sub exposures stacked together. And so you can see there's a single, there's a stack. So a lot comes out in the stack as you increase the signal to noise ratio by stacking many together. Here's a single O3 sub, oxygen three. You can see there's just barely something there. It's a little bit uh, hard to make out. Here's after we stack, and then it's a lot more evident uh, where that O3 is. Again, I'll show you a single, and after the stack. Okay, and then last, here's the S2 signal, so the sulfur. Um, there's a, a single, oh, sorry, this is a single, got out of order. And there's the stack of the sulfur. Single and stack. All right, with that said, we can move on. All right, now we're gonna start processing and we're gonna start with a program called Deep Sky Stacker. It's a free program. You can download it online, uh, just Google Deep Sky Stacker. It is Windows only, but I know some people uh, use something like Wine to get it on Mac or Linux, but uh, I've only used it on Windows. Um, there are alternative stacking programs um, like Sequator, I'm not exactly sure how to say it. There's also um, something called Open Sky Stacker. So if you are looking for something that isn't Windows only, there are alternatives, or you can try to get it working uh, using Wine. Anyways, it's free, it works pretty well for registration and stacking of your images if you're doing deep sky astrophotography. You basically just follow along here on the left-hand side from the top to the bottom. So I'm gonna start with open picture files. And this is asking for my light frames. I've already organized everything here. So I have my lights, my flats, my darks, my dark flats. I'm gonna go into the lights folder. Start with the HA. Go ahead and press Control A to select all the files and click open. And if I scroll down here, you can see it's a bunch of files loaded. If I click check all, I can see how many. Okay, so I have 32 HA light frames loaded. Um, I've already gone through these and thrown out a few that I knew were bad, but um, I'll show you how you could do that in Deep Sky Stacker as well. What you can do is click on one and then use this little histogram slider guy up here in the upper right. Doing it pretty badly here. Okay, there we go. And you can zoom in. I'm just using my scroll pad here to zoom in. Look at the stars and then you can move through and it will keep applying that same histogram stretch. So you can get an idea of what each frame looks like um, to see if there's any that you wanna throw out. Okay, anyways, that's the light frames. I'm gonna go ahead and add my dark frames here. Then add my flats. And 
And finally, my dark flats. OK, so with everything added there, I'm not using bias. I have found with the ASI 1600, um, I don't like using uh, bias frames. Instead, I just use these dark flats, which are just like darks, um, except they are timed so that they are the same exposure length as your flat frames. So I have 32 light frames, 15 darks, 29 flats, 20 dark flats. Seems OK. If, as long as everything's in the double digits, it will probably work pretty well. Um, and But since we are doing a complete narrowband image with not just the HA, but also the S2 and the O3, I'm going to load those, but into different tabs down here. Um, one thing that's not entirely intuitive, but it makes sense once you get used to it, is that down here it says main group. And if we were just doing like a DSLR uh, stack in Deep Sky Stacker, this is all we would have to worry about. But since we're shooting mono and we want to uh, separate out by filter, we're going to use this group one to add the next filter set. So main group, we're going to remember, is all HA. I'm going to then click on the group one tab and go through the same process of adding first my lights, but this time for the O3. Then my darks. These are actually the same darks, but it doesn't matter. Then my flats for the O3. And finally, my dark flats for the O3. OK, so now this is all O3 stuff. I'm going to go ahead and click Check All. OK, so now we have all of that. Deep Sky Stacker is actually smart to recognize that those were the same dark frames I loaded in the HA group, so it still says 15 right there. Um, but you can see both the flat frames count, the dark flat frames count, and the light frames count have all increased. OK, lastly, I'm going to now click on Group 2 and add my S2 lights. I know this is all a little bit tedious, but I just want to show every step so no one loses track of what I'm doing here. Again, the darks are the same darks that I used before um, because you don't need to shoot different darks for different filters since uh, the camera doesn't know what, you know, if it's completely dark, it doesn't matter what filter you're using. But flats, you do have to shoot by filter just in case your your filters were um, dirty and they had different dust patterns on them. OK, so now I have everything loaded. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click Check All again and just look through this. And normally what I would do now is I'd go into each individual frame and check it and make sure that it looks OK just by going through here. I'm just using my arrow key, my down arrow key, to look through each frame. And really, you would want to actually um, look at the stars, make sure that you don't have any streaky stars in each frame. I'm just sort of abbreviating this process because I've already actually looked at all of these. But you'd want to look at every light frame and weed out any that were bad. Just delete them from the list. Oh, this is actually a cool frame to show. See these? Um, these are probably satellites or airplanes. Don't have to worry about those. If you see some frames that are fine, except they have some of these streaks through them because of the airplanes or the satellites, just leave those in because as long as you're using at least 10 uh, subs, that's not going to matter. Those are just going to average out. All right. So let's just say I've looked through all the light frames now. I'm going to go back to my main group here. Now, at this point, we don't know uh, what is the best reference frame to use. Um, so the cool thing about Deep Sky Stacker is after we register all of these pictures, 
it will give each picture a score and we can pick the picture that has the best score to register all the other frames to, meaning that it's going to use that frame to assign any offsets. So um, if something is a little bit uh, shifted, we know that they will actually because I used what's called dithering. So it's moving the pictures around purposely. It's going to then take one frame and register all the pictures from all three filters to that frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and click register checked pictures. I'll leave um, all of these uh, settings alone, but I'm going to turn off stack after registering right now because I just want to register and then look at the score uh, of each sub. Under advanced tab here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this compute the number of detected stars. This gives me an average in the HA tab of 540 stars. That's a perfectly acceptable number. If you have hundreds of stars, that's good. Um, my feeling is if you have like something like 10,000 stars, you probably want to lower the threshold because then it's going to just be doing too much work trying to find the, the patterns. If you have like under 100 stars, that's probably, uh, you probably want to raise the threshold a little bit. Um, if you, real actually, really anything above like probably fifty stars will work. Um, but if if you have like under ten stars, it's probably going to fail. So that that's just sort of a ballpark. Um, I'm not exactly sure about those numbers, but you just want to always. I always go into this advanced tab and press that just to sort of make sure that everything is looking fine. But usually with this um, default twenty percent, it usually works fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and then it's immediately going to start um, calibrating. It's taking all of the dark frames right now, creating a master dark frame. We'll just let it do that, and I'll show, and then we'll see what happens next. It's now creating the master dark. Um, it does all kinds of just with the default parameters. It does kind all kinds of. Um, Averaging and throwing out outliers, what this median kappa sigma means is that it it looks at a standard deviation of all the values and throws out outliers that uh, just seem like they're not in every picture. Um, you want this because you want your master dark to be a true, uh, what am I trying to say, a true standard for what the what the dark current is in your camera. Um, so now it's doing the same thing for the dark flat frames. I'm gonna probably go ahead and just uh, fast forward uh, in the video through this because it's a little bit automatic. You don't have to worry about it too much. Um, and I don't have much too much else to say. But basically what this is doing is it's taking all the individual subs and condensing them down into masters. So uh, you have a master dark, a master dark flat, and a master flat for each filter. It then calibrates all the light frames per group or per filter, um, and then assigns each uh, sub a score based on uh, the signal to noise ratio and the roundness of the stars. So we'll let it do its work here. It's probably gonna take like an hour or something. And then we will come back and move on to the next part of this, which is uh, stacking everything based on a single reference frame. All right, it's done registering all of these and has given everything a score. I'm gonna go ahead and sort it by score um, just by tapping my mouse right here on the word score twice. And so what this does is now I can see that frame 18 has the best score, 8679. Um, and if I scroll down here, I can see the worst HA frame has a score of 4110. I don't know exactly what this score means, um, but in terms of the number, but just higher numbers are better. Um, so I'm gonna use the 
frame that has the highest score to register everything else. If I look at group one, which is the 03, that doesn't have a higher score. If I look at the S2, that doesn't have a higher score either. So the HA is going to be the one that I'm gonna use, and specifically this one that has the highest score, frame 18. To make it the registration master frame, I'm going to right click on it and or sorry, not registration mastery, reference frame. That's the deep sky stacker terminology. And so I'm gonna right click on it and choose use as reference frame. When you do that, you'll notice that over here in score, there's now this little asterisk next to it. Um, so you can remember that that is your reference frame. So now when I register, it's going to use that one. I'm going to go ahead and click uncheck all. Okay, next I want to just uh, register all of my HA frames. So I'm just going to go ahead and select everything here, right click and check. So I have everything in the main group checked, nothing in group one or group two. Then I'm going to go into stacked check pictures. Um, it lets me know, you know, I have the darks, I have the dark flat, I have the flats. And I can go into recommended settings here and just look through using Sigma clipping, it's using blah, blah, blah. Okay, I basically just use the recommended settings, automatic alignment. Um, I typically don't mess with things in here, but uh, if you want to mess around, you can, there's a lot of different options. Um, but I think that the defaults are usually pretty good going to use standard mode for stacking. Okay. And I'm going to click okay again and let this do its thing. So when it says computing offsets, what that means is it's taking all of the different HA lights and using the reference frame to register um, all of these different uh, light frames. And it's already um, created master darks, master dark flats, and master flats. So you can see that it just used the masters that it already created. And right now it's already going in and stacking all of the lights together. So this actually shouldn't take that long. Um, the you can see the estimated time remaining here under two minutes. The part that takes longer was that first step where it was actually creating all of the master calibration frames and then calibrating all the lights for each filter. This is actually a pretty uh, quick process by comparison. Just creating your master HA light is what you can think of it as. Notice now um, it says angle 178 degrees. What happened there was there was a meridian flip, meaning that it the frames on the second half of this are almost 180 degrees different than the, the first one um, because we changed from the east to the west side of the meridian. Okay, now it's loading our final uh, autosave.tiff. You can see where it's located right up here. Some other videos I've seen on Deep Sky Stacker will suggest you now mess around with uh, this and apply and save off that um, picture and then go on to Photoshop or GIMP or whatever it is you're using. 
there's really no reason to do any processing in Deep Sky Stacker. And actually, if you read the instruction manual, it says this is basically just here as a convenience. So you can sort of see what your data looks like. Um, it's not meant as a uh, thing for actual final processing. Um, but if we now go back into the folder, the HA folder, you can see in addition to all of these pictures, we now have autosave.tiff. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of the folder. And rename it here as ha.tiff. Another thing you can do, instead of doing it that way, is you can choose save picture to file over here and just make sure that embed adjustments in the saved image but do not apply them is the option checked rather than apply adjustments to the saved image. Um, and then you can just call it something hafinal.tiff and save it wherever you want. I'll just save it to the desktop. So either way, you can just you can choose save picture to file and just make sure that this embed adjustments in the saved image but do not apply them is the option, or you can just rename the autosave. Either way will work, but you don't you definitely don't want to make any adjustments in Deep Sky Stacker and apply them before you save the final stack. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so next we're going to do the O3. And if we look back at the main group here, we can see that everything is unchecked, um, but I still have this little asterisk. I'm gonna go into, that means this is the reference frame that it's going to register everything against. I'm gonna go into O3, and if everything isn't already checked, I'm gonna go ahead and check everything. Again, the way you can do that, I'll just do uncheck all. Click on the first frame, shift click on the last frame, then right click and choose check. Okay, for some reason, I don't have the dark frames loaded anymore. So I'm gonna go back in here into the main group and also check all my darks. Just click and shift click and check. Okay, so I have those 15 dark frames, 25 light frames from the 03, 30 flat frames, 20 dark flat frames. Okay, now that I have everything I needed for the 03 stack checked and I am going to be registering against this HA reference frame. Again, that's really important that for each filter you're, you're uh, using offsets against the same reference frame so that when you put all three filters together into a full color image, they're all stacked together uh, correctly. I can now go over here to stack checked pictures and there are some things that are, are not so great about um, Deep Sky Stacker terminology because when it talks about registering frames to a reference frame, it uses the word offsets, but then it also uses the word offset for bias. So when it says no offset right here, it's talking about there's no uh, bias frames loaded, but that's fine because we're not using bias frames. We do have darks, dark flats, flats. And of course, lights, uh, 2503 lights. So basically we're just repeating this process now for the 03. I'm gonna click okay again. It'll go through, do its thing, and I'll check back in a second here. Okay, the 03 is now stacked. Um, 
<clears throat> You'll notice that up here, it saves it to the HA folder. The reason is that uh, for whatever reason, Deep Sky Stacker thinks that the autosave should always go into the, the same folder that the reference frame is in. Any case, I'm just going to use the save picture to file command down here under processing. Make sure that this embed adjustments in the saved image but do not apply them is the option that's checked and call this 03 final and click save. Okay, so now if we look at our progress here, we have the HA final, the 03 final dot tiff. Um, You'll notice that the little preview on each of these is black. That's perfectly fine. Do not worry about the fact that you're not seeing anything in these yet, other than maybe some really bright stars, um, because these are not yet stretched. Um, we'll do that in the next step. Lastly, though, we have to go back here to register checked images one more time go into or click uncheck all to uncheck all the 03 files go into group 2 which is the s2 frames click on the first file scroll down shift click on the last file right click choose check go back here to our main group and check all of the darks Click, shift click, right click, check. So you have 15 darks. Oh, I only got 15 lights on this too. That's okay. Uh, normally I try to get 20, but 15 is okay. 30 flat frames, 20 dark flat frames. Okay, so that's all set. Again, it's still going to register against our reference frame, which is here in the main group, the HA. And let's go ahead and click on register checked images. Nope, sorry, stack checked images. Okay, no bias frames, that's fine. We're gonna be stacking an hour and 15 minutes of S2. All sounds good, let's click okay. And it does its thing. Okay, now we have the S2 done. Again, it saves it to the HA folder, but we can go ahead and just go to save picture to file. Make sure that the do not apply the adjustments is checked and sh save this as S2 final TIFF to the desktop. I'm gonna minimize Deep Sky Stacker. And this is what we wanna see when we're all done. A HA, O3, and S2. All 16-bit TIFFs, all stacked, calibrated, and registered. We're now gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. In this case, we're going to open up GIMP. You want GIMP 2.10 at least. Um, depending on when you're watching this video, they may have released newer versions, but I know that in 2.10 it can handle 16-bit processing. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Open as Layers. Go to my desktop. Pick these three uh, files that we just created, these three TIFF files. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the visibility of the O3 and S2, just start with the HA. And I'm gonna go up here to the colors menu and choose levels. And I'm going to start stretching this image Okay, choose levels again, reset my black point, but also 
move the mid slider over a little bit. Okay. Go do it again. Again, reset my black point. I'm just sort of looking at where the histogram is here. Okay, do it again. Color levels. Reset my black point. Move the mid slider over. And it's just this iterative process. You just do this a few times. Levels. Reset the black point. And each time I move the mid slider over a little bit less, um, this time it's just a little bit in. I'm just gonna do it one more time. Color, levels, reset the black point. Okay, I lied, I'm gonna do it one more time. This time I'm just gonna do the black point over. Perfect. Okay, so that's stretching. It's you're gonna see that it, it works much better in GIMP compared to doing it in Deep Sky Stacker using just the levels command there. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna repeat this process now for the O3. Colors, levels. You start with the midpoint slider, bring it over. Then each time you reset black while bringing mid over. Till you have something like this where the O3 is showing nicely. Okay, I'm gonna turn on my S2. Do it one more time. Colors, levels. Start with your mid. Bring it over. Okay, so I'm literally just doing the same thing. Resetting my black point over and over again using the left side of the histogram here while bringing over my <clears throat> midpoint to stretch out the signal. So now I'm just gonna look at each one. Looks like each time I left the sky a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the black point on each of these. Actually, that looks fine. Let me trick the HA. I'm just gonna bring up the HA a little bit. Okay, so the point is each of these looks like they have about an equal stretch now in terms of the sky background looks similar. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go up to colors, go down to components and choose channel mixer. No, that's not it, sorry. I'm gonna go up to colors, go down to components and choose Compose. And if you hover over this, it says, create an image using multiple gray images as color channels, which is exactly what we wanna do. For the red, I'm going to choose the S2 layer. For the green, I'm gonna choose the HA. And for the blue, I'm gonna choose the O3. This is SHO processing. So the red is the S, 
the green is the H, blue is the O. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. It will open up a new tab with our new color image after it composes them. Pretty awesome, huh? So, uh, first thing I notice is that we have some registration artifacts here because the <clears throat> my rotation angle wasn't perfect. So along the edges here, we have some things that are sort of ugly. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those using the crop tool, which is right here, or you can press Shift C to get to it. And I'm just going across each edge here and getting as much of the picture as I can while cropping. Okay, it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter to crop it. Very cool. Okay, uh, really the only thing else that I wanna do with this is just play around with the curves and colors now. Um, not much else you have to do. This is actually, I think, a pretty fine image as is. I could just save it right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and play around just a little bit with curves first. I'm going to bring my black point in a little bit. I'm going to bring this up then I'm going to take this down a little bit. This just improves the contrast a bit. Um, it's sort of a modified S-curve. Um, we don't necessarily have to bring this so far up. If we wanna do a little bit more modest. I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, the other thing I'm noticing about this image is that it's pretty green. Um, this is typical of just straight show imaging, um, SHO, because the you're usually your H alpha channel, which you assign to the green, is much stronger than the O3 and S2 signal. So you get a sort of greenish image. Some people are fine with this. I think it looks pretty cool actually. But if you wanted to turn it less green, how would you do that in GIMP? Um, the, so when you take out some of the green, that's typically called the Hubble palette. And the way you do it in GIMP is we're going to go back to colors, channels, colors, components, sorry, but choose the channel mixer. And with this, if you have preview on, you can really do a lot to change the colors just by messing around with these different things here. So in the green channel, I'm going to take out some of the green. And just like that, you go from a pretty um, show looking image to a more Hubble palette image. So you can see all I did there was I went from 1.0 on the green to 0.5, so about ha having the amount of green in the image makes it look much more Hubble palette -y. If I increase the red in the red channel, then that brings out these golden tones even more. And if I increase the blue in the blue channel, you can see then then the then the O3 signal really pops. Um, the one issue with doing this is then your stars go pretty magenta-y. Um, I don't know of a great way to fix that in GIMP, um, but GIMP is the, pro is the 
software I am least experienced with. So if you know of a great way to fix magenta stars in GIMP, please let me know in the comments and uh, other people can find that as well. Okay, so if you wanted um, the Hubble palette look, this is how you would do it, the channel mixer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel just to show you back what the just straight show look looked like. Um, a little bit more green, uh, maybe a little bit less contrast, but I think it's a pretty interesting look. Um, and that's really all I have to say about processing uh, show images in GIMP. It's really just about getting good data, putting it together, making sure you're using all your calibration frames. When you're all done, you can choose File, Save As. If you're planning to return to it, you can save it in the GIMP format. When you're all done and you want to save it to the web, you can choose File Export. And I'm going to go ahead and save that to my desktop as a PNG. Right, now we have a cool looking seagull nebula in the show format. Again, if you wanted a more Hubble palette image with GIMP, all you'd have to do is go to colors, components, channel mixer, and play around with this. I'm just gonna take out some of the green channel, click okay, and I'll save this one as, oh, I mean export this one, sorry, file export as Hubble. All right, that's it for this video. If you uh, have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. And my website is at nebulaphotos.com. Here at the end, you're gonna see my Patreon uh, subscribers. Um, if you're interested in becoming a patron, uh, you can check out the link right below this video. Thanks so much for watching. Mm-hmm.